welcome back. And today we are going to look at the Mastermind game. So if you've seen this in the stores, this actually is a game that you can uh, purchase. The whole idea is that you have a random code, which is going to be generated in here. And we're going to start from the bottom. And by clicking on these stars, we will create a code. So for instance, it could be all reds. And I'm going to click Submit. And so a red dot over there means that, so for every red circle next to the submit button, they have one slot of the code correct. For every white circle next to the submit button, they have one correct color, but in the wrong position. So in this case, only one of these is correct and in the right position. And then we will try again with a completely different code. So what we can determine from here is that we've got one, another one that is in the same position. And the only thing that was the same was this red one. So let's leave that there. And then one of these other colors is correct, which is not, not in the right position. So we'll swap these two. And we'll do a green there. So now we've got two in the right position. So let's try this with the black and let's do white and white. Okay, so we're going to say that those two are in the right position, but now we're missing either a blue or a green. I should have caught that before. So let's put green here, I'll do a purple. And so I won because I got the code correct. So all four are correct. And we can see that here. Red, black, green, and purple. Red, black, green, and purple. Now if I'd gotten all the way to the top and not guessed it, then that would have shown me that I did not succeed. So we'll do that real quick. So now the code maker one. And so we'll see that the last one's red, but we have black, blue, blue, and red. Now we'll move on to the code. On the CSS, we have our code wrapper, the simple border, some width, some height, and we want to do the display uh, set, set to flex. Uh, we have our solution row, so that's going to be at the top, and we just have some width on there. For there to be no color, um, we set the margin, some font size, and cursor. Uh, so that's going to be with the uh, little star or asterisk. Uh, row output, so that's going to be that little box next to the submit. We'll have our border, width, width height, and margin. The button, so that's going to be um, that submit button. And then our slot. We've got border, border radius, width, height, margin, cursor. And this is going to be one of the different pegs or uh, circles that you can select. And then I've got a red, a blue, a black, a white, a green, a purple. And then we have a red result and a white result, which is going to be in that box again when they, uh, after they click submit. On the HTML, we have our basic head that just has all of our different uh, CSS and uh, uh, JS, JavaScript. Then we have our header, our little bit of an introduction and exp explanation. Then we have our solution row. And then we just load up the, uh, the game board and then the mastermind uh, JS. So onto the JavaScript. We have the slots set to four and six. Um, you can make it so that this user would be able to select between 
zero or one and fifteen, um, and two to six colors. Uh, I did not implement that right now, but feel free to go ahead and make those changes. So we automatically get a random color, or there is a random color function. We get a random uh, a random number, multiply by 100, get the floor of that, and then modulo that with the colors. So there's six in this instance. And then we get the color from that code. And so we'll switch it on, if it's zero, it's red, one blue, and so on and so forth. So it's a nice switch statement and return the color. And then to get the code from the color, we give it the color and do a switch statement and then get back the code. To set the solution, we have the solution array. We set it to be empty. We clear out the solution row uh, by the document element ID. We iterate through for however many slots that have been determined from up here. And we randomly select a color and input that into our into the solution row. Game setup. So we clear out the game board and all of the uh, the uh, rows that you can guess, and we reset them to have the no color. And we clear out all of the uh, solution boxes and uh, re-enable uh, the submit buttons. To check a row, we have the guest array and the correct and the correct count. We iterate through the slots in order to get what the guest array is. We make sure that nothing is going to be undefined, so we check to make sure that it is. If it has undefined, then we just let the user know with an alert to please ensure that uh, the slots have pegs that are selected. Otherwise, then we set the uh, submit button uh, to be disabled. We then call get correct position, correct color. We give it the solution array and the guest array, and then we show results. Show row results. And we'll get to that in just a second. If the correct count is uh, equal to four, then we let them know that the code breaker won. And if um, it is row nine, then we show the solution and we say the code maker one. Just to show the solution, we then just set the display to be block, which we had set to be um, none or uh, hidden earlier. For the get correct position, correct color, we give in the arrays. And so we copy those in. We have our counts, we set them to zero and zero. And so we cycle through the slots. And we actually start at the end and work our way down back to zero. So we have the slot length minus one, and then we wait until it, uh, so we, it's, it's while well, i is greater than or equal to a zero, and then every time we iterate through, we uh, deduct one from i. If the copy array element i equals the same as copy array two uh, element at i, then we uh, splice. So we pull it out of those arrays. Uh, so that's going to be the index it starts at, and then how many indexes or the length of that splice, meaning we're going to pull it out. Uh, we, we add one to the counts um, at the zero index, which means that's, at the uh, again, correct position and correct color. For this one, we look at the length. As long as the length's equal, because, again, we just we pulled all that out. Then we let the temp these temp arrays equal uh, arrays full of zeros. We iterate through the copy array. We get the colors, the color codes from each of the indexes. 
sorry, actually, we, uh, we, we add, we iterate through. So this is going to be in the same order as we had above. So they'll map to these codes. And we're going to add one to each one that it that they uh, map to. Each code maps to. And then we're going to cycle through temp array one. And if temp array one at the index is greater than zero, and temp array two at that index is greater than zero. And let's do another, we did it with nested if. If temp array one index is greater than temp array two index, then we are going to add, we're going to add that count to the counts at array, um, the, the, the array, the counts array at index one. Else, then we're going to add it to, or then we're going to grab temporary ones. So whichever one has a greater, we're going to add it here. And this is going to give us the amount of correct colors we have. So again, this is going to look at what's in the right position. And this is, this is what's going to be able to tell us what is in the correct correct colors, but not the correct position. And then we return that array. So again, if we go back up here, that's where we get this correct count. Then we're going to show the results. So we bring in the array from up above here, and we can prove that. right here. So again, we got that correct position, correct color, and then we pass that array into show results. And then we just say which row we're actually in. And by doing that, then we know which row. So we clear, we make sure it's cleared out, and it's the output part. We have a top result row and a bottom result result row. And so we set those. We have a count set to zero. So everything's in the correct position. And this has to be random because you don't want the result pegs to map to a specific peg that was guessed. So they need to be randomized. So if count is less than the ceiling of counts of, so if we add counts zero, index zero and counts index one, add those together, we divide that by two and we get the ceiling of that. So if it's like 4.2 for, per se, it's gonna go to five. Then we give it the top top result row. Otherwise, we give it the bottom row. So this just gives it a way to be somewhat random. And we add one to the, um, to the count. So we do that for all of the, um, the number, the counts. So however many were in the right position, we go through this process. However many we have in the correct color, we do the same process, but it'll be for the white um, result peg color. We add count there. We then add the end of the HTML for the top result and the bottom result row. And then we add that to our actual uh, inner HTML for the output. For changing the color, so when I clicked it, it'll cycle through the different colors. And by doing that, we pass in the element. And so as if the class list, uh, so if the element has uh, equals slot in the class list uh, at index zero, then the current color, it, we're gonna grab that. That should be the second 
um, Shaban second uh, index or index one. We're then going to remove whatever the current color is. And we're going to get the color code. So we're have, we have the, the current color. We're going to get the color code from that. We're going to add one to that. We then modulo it with however many colors we have to make sure that we always have a number that's not going to give us an undefined or anything like that. Then we get that color code back so that it maps to the right CSS. And we add that to the class list. If it does not have slot in there, then the elements in our HTML we just clear out. We remove no color. We add slot. And we add the color um, of red, so the, the, the first one. This is what happens when we load the uh, when we load the JS, because we have this event listener for load, we have mastermind load, so it's going to call set solution and game setup. This is pretty cool, and I'd like to see where people take it from here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.